we commence this Bible study with prayer. Our holy and gracious Heavenly Father, we bow before you this evening, coming in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, seeking the forgiveness of our sins and the merciful enabling of the Holy Spirit of God. Help us this evening to be truly blessed as we study your holy word together and find truths contained therein and which we trust will be applied in your mercy to our lives. Bless our brother Bradley's message to us this evening according to your sovereign grace and will and purpose. O Lord, grant to us wisdom to walk as your children in a troubled world, knowing that you remain God who is in sovereign control and new today in eternity past. Help us to take opportunities granted to us for the gospel and to help the needy. Please draw near to those deeply troubled at this time as they call out to you for all needed help in their time of need. And may this church be preserved and strengthened spiritually for the future path that you have ordained for us. And may we walk in the pathway of humility and repentance and faith and reverence and obedience before an awesome God. Thank you, O Lord, that you have provided for us in Jesus Christ a refuge and a reconciliation and righteousness. And by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, we can cry, Abba, Father. Hear us now, we pray. Bless the hymns we sing, the scripture we read, and what we learn from it this evening. We pray in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing together hymn number 751. 751. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me.
Please turn with me to the Word of God for our instruction, found in the Gospel of Matthew and chapter 11 and verses 20 to 30. The Gospel of Matthew and chapter 11 and verses 20 to 30. Then he, that is Jesus, began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazon! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the Lord bless his holy word to our understanding together this evening. And now our brother Bradley Hammond will now lead the Bible study for us this evening. Before we come to look at God's word, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do ask for your help at this time, Lord, as we Look at thy word. May you reveal something new, something fresh to us, Lord. May something be restored to our hearts. And Lord, we do pray that you would uh, help us to uh, learn more of thee. May we love thee more as we learn of thy truth and what you have done for us, Lord, uh, and the offer that you've given to us. And Lord, do help us now as, as we seek thy face. In Jesus' name. Amen. The verses that I wanted to look at, uh, particularly this evening, come from uh, chapter 11, as we read, but in verses 28 to 30. And it says this, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now here is a, a, a couple of verses that we're probably all rather familiar with. We may have received them in times of trouble, in times of trial. We may have even offered them to other people uh, who are also uh, in a time of burden for themselves. And what's so lovely about these verses, it's, it's an invitation. It's an invitation to those who are unsaved, an invitation to come and, and lay that burden of sin uh, to Jesus that he may deal with their sin. But it's also uh, assurance to the child of God. Assurance that we can return to him with whatever burdens we have in this world and that he um, can deal with them. That we take upon ourselves the yoke that he has for us and to learn of him. And then through that we find rest unto our souls. It's not only just a a promise, but this illustration teaches us again uh, the sinful nature of our hearts and and our tendencies. And and such is the teaching of Jesus. Doesn't it reflect uh, our nature's uh, at all times. You see the rest here that Jesus is talking about 
is not something of a, a physical attribute. We know that rest is something much deeper within. If rest was to do with uh, the physical element, we could say that this day, in our day and age, at this time now, that our country is at a time of rest. Well, there aren't many people going to work. There aren't children going to school. Uh, we're only allowed outside for a limited amount of exercise. Well, we should be uh, very well rested in this time. But we know that that is not the case. No, our country is in a, in a state of great unrest because it's something deeper. It's something within that's being challenged. Our spirit is in great turmoil because we're dealing with something that's unknown. An uncontrolled element uh, is affecting us. And our sinful human nature, which demands this kind of self-sufficiency, is being challenged. No, true rest is not from staying at home. It's not about how much we understand about our circumstances and putting an answer to everything. It's not how much money that we have to fall back on in times of trouble. No, true rest is that which can withstand all these things, all these fiery trials. We can still be rested. And as Jesus tells us, that rest only comes from him. If we take that yoke upon us, and we will learn of him, and our souls will be rested. In our scripture reading, we read from uh, verse 20. And here we find that Jesus is speaking uh, about the Jewish people uh, in their blindness uh, towards Christ and who he was and uh, the truth about sin. And you see, the trouble was is that they were pursuing what they believed would bring them peace and rest. And this was through salvation, uh, through the working of the law. Well, we know that this uh, method that they pursued was not true rest, but it was a burden. In Matthew 23, Jesus describes this burden uh, that the scribes and the Pharisees place upon the people. He says, All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, and observe to do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. And so it's, it's the same now, isn't it? In today's society, the whole world is striving for something that's unobtainable. This peace and rest that is from the soul. They're telling us that we need through a good education, through a good job. We can buy a nice big house and, and drive a snazzy car. Then we can be uh, at rest. And then we can be satisfied within ourselves. That is not the rest that we naturally yearn for. But is this the feeling or the burden that we have today? Are there things uh, in life still that are still burdening us? And if so, we are invited by the meek and lowly one, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is the King of Kings, God in the flesh, the one who knows all, who sees all, and who hates sin above all. He has every right to compel man uh, by the sword, through fear. But the truth is, he doesn't come this way. No, he comes meek and lowly as the gentle, loving saviour. Not like some angry father who is irritated by the concerns of his children. You know, this is the way that many people see God as an angry one. But this is not true of our saviour, Jesus Christ. He is loving and kind. He wills his children that they should bring their burdens. This is a saviour who looked upon Jerusalem in their sin and in their blindness and was in floods of tears over their estate. This is a man that we can trust. This is a man who is approachable. Jesus, he was an approachable man. You see, in the accounts we read that he loved the sinner. He spent time with any any kind of individual. Even the diseased felt comfortable to approach him. Children uh, flocked to him when he was teaching. I always think that's such a good uh, judgment of character is how chil children uh, determine someone to be. They trusted Jesus. He was an approachable man. So what do we have to fear tonight in approaching him? In approaching him when he says, come unto me, all ye that labour. He's an approachable one. And he has promised to ease our burden, to find, to give us rest in our souls. So whether it's rest for our burden for the first time, whether it's the burden of sin, that is crushing us, or whether it's 
uh, us as a child of God, approaching him for the hundredth time uh, in repentance, uh, bringing him the, the Bringing him the, the burdens of our everyday life. No, Jesus upbraideth not. He, he wants us and wills us to come to him and to bring us, bring him uh, our burdens. And so, in the fashion of Christ's teaching, he gives us a, a simple uh, and understandable picture that would have been uh, relevant in those days, that of uh, a yoke. Now, just to remind you that a, a yoke is, is a beam which was used as a coupling device. And it would hold two oxen together so that they may be able to pull certain loads, whether that was uh, raw materials or or a wagon or some sorts, or even to plough a field. They were like the uh, biblical version of a tractor, if you like, the the power uh, that they required to, to perform these tasks. And so we are told that under this yoke is where we are going to find true rest. And so when... Uh, reading and studying about um, the methods of using a yoke and using oxen, it it brought up some beautiful parallels uh, in relationship to uh, us and Christ, our Saviour, and how we walk with him and how he works with us. And so when training a steer, a steer being a a young bull who is uh, going to become an ox, when training one of these, the first thing that needed to happen was a relationship. Uh, must be established with the master. You see, there's no way a steer would yield to a yoke unless it trusted the master. And so here we have Jesus, the meek and lowly one, the one that you can trust. And here he offers to take your burdens. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Jesus makes it clear to us that to be in a place of rest does not make mean no more work. We already established that. This is not a physical rest This is a deeper spiritual rest of soul and of our heart. After all, we know that a yoke is a means of labour for pulling and for moving things. But the the rest comes from the fact that we are bound to Christ through that labour. Not taking away the labour, but bound to Christ through that labour. You see, when it was common practice when training a young steer, that it would be yoked to an older, stronger and more experienced ox. As the younger would learn and and try and pull away, as its old nature would tell it that this is not the place that it needs to be or wants to be, the older, more sturdy and mellow ox would keep it on course. And often we can question that idea of of finding rest whilst being bound, can't we? It seems like an odd thing to express rest in a place where the steer is bound. But aren't there times when... We have tried to pull away from, from our Saviour. Aren't there times when we have thought that the road that we're going down is not the way that we should be and we try to pull away from it? Where we go, where we think best to go and then when we come through, don't we just look back and aren't we just so thankful for those unbreakable cords that tie us to Jesus? For the reality is is that Christ has pulled us through and if we had our own way, it would only lead to destruction. We should be so thankful for these cords that bind us to him, for this yoke in which we are coupled to him with. To illustrate this further, I remember when Hudson was uh, about six months old and he would really struggle to sleep throughout the day. And I'm sure, as as many of you know, it can be quite uh, a miserable time when your child isn't getting the sleep uh, that they require. And so I soon learnt that the best way uh, to do this was to hold him uh, against my chest uh, and I would have to use quite a firm hold for him. And, to, and he would struggle and he would scream. It was quite heartbreaking at the time. But it's what needed to be done. And then when he finally succumbed, when he finally submitted uh, to my strength, submitted to the fact that he wasn't moving, that he wasn't going anywhere, that's when he found rest and he got the rest that he needed. It was in my arms like that. But this is not constraint. It was security. He found security in my arms. He knew that there was nowhere that he could go and there he found comfort and fell asleep. And really this is our greatest rest as children of God, the security of our salvation. John 5, 24 says, Jesus is saying these words, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. These are such comforting words for us as children of God. This really explains our yoke, us being yoked to him, 
those everlasting bands that tie us together. We have everlasting life. We shall not come into condemnation. And we have passed from death into life. These are present tense phrases that they're using. There's no possibility that we can come away from him. There's no way, there's no will of man, no scheme of hell that will pull us out of his hands. And when we just humble ourselves, when we submit to the authority of Jesus, it's him that keeps us on the path of salvation. The yoke of salvation will guide us because Christ is the one beside us the whole way. He's the one pulling us. He's the strong one. We're just there for the ride, really. You see, no other religion offers such rest that we have. No other religion allows for such assurance in their salvation. The Catholic faith tells us that we can lose such a thing. The Muslims, they teach you can live a a righteous life, but it all depends on how God feels on the day of judgment. This isn't, this is not so. No, our Saviour, when, when He saves us, we are saved eternally and we are sealed. Is this not our greatest rest? The knowledge in our Saviour who has us, who keeps us, who holds us in his arms, we just have to submit to him and realise that he has us and he will carry us the way. So now our song should no longer be about the load that we have to pull. We should no longer be thinking about uh, the load that we are um, burdened with, but it should be as long as I am with Jesus, as long as I am with him, no matter what the burden is placed on us. But Jesus teaches us that his yoke is easy and is light. And that's true, isn't it? This, when, when looking at this illustration of the steer learning to pull alongside the ox, the steer wouldn't really pull anything. The ox would be doing all the work. It was up to the steer to learn of the ox at this time. To, to imitate him. To become like him. You see, our labours in life, when we feel like they're um, getting on top of us, All we have to do is look to the Saviour, look at what he's actually done, compare our works with his works, and it should really put it into perspective for us. For example, when when you and I, we struggle and we wrestle in prayer, and we don't know how to pray as we should, we're told that it is interceded for us. Christ takes those prayers, and only in their perfect state do they reach the throne of grace. When we sin, Jesus has already paid the price. When we wander away, when we when we don't want to go down that road, when we are going through trials and we wander away from Jesus, we are called back. When we witness to people, when we try and to minister, when when we try and tell people of the love of Christ and his sacrifice and the redemption mm-hmm. that he has for us. Well, really, it's not us doing the work, is it? The spirit moves the heart and it's the spirit which does the work of salvation. When we give of our lives, when we give our money, our time, our resources, it is returned to us a hundredfold. When we sacrifice for a fleeting moment, we have all of eternity to enjoy God's riches. Yes, there's a load for us. We're in a yoke and there's a burden to pull. But isn't it a light and easy burden? We are so unequally yoked when we realise this comparison of work that is to be done we are just a young steer next to the strong and faithful ox jesus christ we can also find rest in our learning of him jesus tells us to to learn of him for he is meek and lowly of heart when we are yoked with christ we learn of him using the analogy the young steer would just grow would grow in maturity and strength while alongside the ox And what's so lovely about this is that it was just a byproduct of the proximity to the ox. And it's the same with our walk with Jesus. When we walk with him, then that process of sanctification comes into play. We start to look like Jesus. We start to talk like him. We start to, um, our hearts are changed from that old reckless steer that uh, we once were to the meek and lowly one. And we start to look like him. Galatians 5, Paul really um, explains this process for us in the, in the works of the Spirit, in the, in the fruit of the Spirit. We find, but if ye be led in the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, 
uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Is this not the natural man? Is this not how we once were in this state? Not to say that if we fall into these sins, that we have lost our salvation, but those who continue in this way, well, surely they're not walking with the Saviour. You see, if we walk with him, then we're going to be like him. And that's why they inherit not the kingdom of God. They are not yoked with Christ. He continues, he says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. When we are yoked with Christ, this fruit will come forth. We will start to imitate him. Jesus says, isn't he, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And this is the imitation, this is the learning of him as we live our lives walking alongside him, being yoked to Christ. And this should be, and we should find rest in this, because when we realise we are imitating him, when we see the fruit in our lives, then that's just another assurance of our salvation. It should be a comfort, it's a sign of our communion with him, a mark of our salvation. In J.C. Ryle's book Holiness, uh, he, he talks on the matter, He says the names and the numbers of the elect are a secret thing, no doubt, which God has wisely kept in his own power and not revealed to man. It is not given us in this world to study the pages of the book of life and see if our names are there. But there is one thing clearly and plainly laid down about election. It is this, that the elect men and women may be known and distinguished by holy lives. You see, that is the comfort, that is the rest that we find in the imitation of God, in the learning of Jesus as we walk with him. You see, it's an exhausting way to live in the absence of Jesus. Whether we admit it or not, there are burdens that we need to deal with, that we need to bring to him. Or are we in a position where we're ready to humble ourselves? You see, it's not a one-time thing. Yes, us as children of God, we have come, we have humbled ourselves, we have recognised that we need saving. We need a saviour to deal with our sins and we have come to him. But we need to constantly return to him, submitting and repenting. Uh, Jesus teaches, doesn't he, that we need to keep washing our feet because it's an ongoing work. The hymn writer writes, doesn't he, that we are prone to wonder, oh Lord, how we feel it. And don't we just feel that way sometimes? Well, there's still much that we feel burdened with and often it can be our Christian pride a pride as a Christian, that we know that we've been freed from sin and hell, that we should no longer feel these burdens, but the truth is we still we still do. Things of this world do get on top of us. And there are things that we cannot pull by ourselves, and often we've, we have found ourselves to have wandered away from him. And God recognises this often. And sometimes he will see that we are trying it alone, that we've wandered away from him. And he'll often give us a load much too heavy to handle. You know, I've heard it, I've heard it said uh, many times uh, as a means of comfort that the Lord will never give you more than you can handle. Well, this is not true. You know, that's a sentence that feeds our ego, that, that, um, encourages that self-sufficient nature that we were saved from. The truth is, the Lord will give us more than we can handle. And then he'll give us some more. Because, In that way, we have no other choice but to seek the strength of the Saviour. You see, we can't pull alone. We need that strong ox, the strength of Jesus Christ, to pull with us. Let's be yoked with him. Let's continue being yoked with him. You see, even the hardest of life's trials are for us to seek his face. That's why we're told to count it um, a blessing when we face trials. Because it's it's God calling us back to him. That we may... um, improve that precious bond with him to return to him it reminds us of our frailty but more so of his control and and his love for us and our security only found in him you see even as christ was burdened with calvary in the garden he sought after the father and was strengthened 
You know, this is the imitation that we should we should be making to seek God in these times where we are burdened. You see, when we spend time with the Lord, we are reminded of our situation, and again we find rest in Him. Ephesians 1 is a beautiful uh, chapter for us to remind ourselves of who we are in Christ. And I've just chosen just a few uh, snippets of the chapter um, that encourages us. It says here that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. We are chosen before the foundation of the world. We are adopted by Jesus Christ. We are accepted. We are redeemed. Our sins are forgiven. We are we have obtained an inheritance. And we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, doesn't this just put into perspective our lives here on earth as Christians? You know, these are the reasons that we can sleep at night. Because of this, for what God has done and for his love for us. And it's within that that we find our complete rest. Rest from this world. Rest from the burdens of life and of sin. What burdens are we facing this evening? Well, whatever your burden is. If it's a burden, Jesus is the answer. We're to go to him. We must be humble. We must submit ourselves to him, take on his yoke, to learn from him, to imitate him. You see, there's an invitation and a promise. And what possible reason do we have to refuse? See, he is meek and lowly. He'll upbraideth you not for coming to him. He wants to deal with your burden. And when we do... We have that right attitude of what Christ has done and our burdens in comparison. When thinking about this, I was reminded of, of the hymn by John Henry Samus. And the, it's called Trust and Obey. And it says, Not a burden we bear and not a sh- sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, We will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. And isn't that just the mark of a Christian, to trust and obey? You see, we can find such rest if we just submit and trust and obey. obey. There's There's no burden, there's no sorrow that will disturb that rest within our souls, because we know of what Jesus has done. And it's him that carries us through. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word and we thank you for your promises, Lord. That if we are labouring, if we are heavy laden, that you will give us rest. Lord, do help us to humble ourselves, to come unto you once again, to place our burdens at your feet, Lord. Lord, I do pray that if there is any listening that have not come unto you, have not yielded themselves to your authority and have that burden of sin placed upon them, Lord, may they come. May you do that wonderful work of salvation in them. And Lord, we do pray for the child of God who may be struggling, who may be restless in these times. Father, may you ease their burden. May they come back unto you, Lord, and may they know of the strength of their Saviour. Lord, may we continue Um, to imitate you Lord continue that work of sanctification in us Lord and may you edify us and encourage us uh, as we spend these these weeks apart Lord well we thank you for your word again in Jesus name Amen our final hymn this evening is hymn number 722 rest in the Lord verse 1 says Jesus I am resting resting In the joy of what thou art, I am finding out the greatness of thy loving heart. Thou hast bid me gaze upon thee, and thy beauty fills my soul. For by thy transforming power, thou hast made me whole. Let's sing together hymn number 722.
Father, we do thank you for this time that we can spend in thy word, Lord. We thank you that we are never truly alone, Lord, that we can have fellowship by these means, uh, by using the website and YouTube, Lord. We thank you that we can still uh, commune together, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for thy promises of thy word. We thank you that you take our burdens away, Lord. And we thank you for that blessed security that we have being yoked with thee. Lord, you are a saviour who is approachable, who is meek and lowly, and stick a closer than a brother. And Lord, we do thank you for such a blessed saviour. Lord, help us to continue this week, Lord, in a state of rest. May we recognise what thou hast done for us. And may we, may we find comfort in the promises of God, Lord, that we are yoked with thee, that we have an eternal rest to come, and there is no burden too great, Lord, that can overcome it. Well, thank you for this time and bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.